Welcome to topic 6 of module 1. Here we are going to implement the spam fighting case study using a different algorithm than the blacklisting technique. The algorithm is called LSH or localized or local sensitive hash. Primarily, we will be using a library called Data Sketch, which is a Python library. And it, it has a very comprehensive coverage for min hash plus local sensitive hash algorithm to perform string matching. The basic purpose of this library is to perform approximate string matching, that is probabilistic string matching. It's not exact string matching. So what this library is doing is that the min hash converts the string tokens into short signatures that is hash so it converts them into some identifiable piece of information in this case it is called signature the second thing that lsh is doing is to apply the min hash signatures instead of raw tokens thus it greatly improves the performance let's take a look at how actually this fuzzy hashing works on these spam messages Fuzzy hashing on spam messages and performs the fuzzy hashing on the messages and filter the email that produced a similar hash. Now, the primary reason behind this kind of fuzzy hashing is or the primary assumption is that the spammers use some automation in crafting system. So whenever they are creating the spam messages, those spam messages are a slight variation of the previous one, right? This is the basic assumption in this algorithm. So what this hashing algorithm is doing is that it allow you to find approximate matches of the email that have been marked previously as spam. I want to give an example over here. Suppose you have a string in the spam email that you have won a lottery right so now in the in the test email you want to test that whether an email is spam or not you just have a new string you have a new lottery so now only the word new is added now if we do an exact string match that will create a false result because both strings are not equal now if we have uh, fuzzy hashing so because the uh, you have a new lottery string and you have a lottery string both of them are approximate equivalent to each other so the fuzzy hashing will say true whereas the exact string matching will result in false so let's take a look at this technique into more formal way the spammer uses different techniques to generate the spam emails and let's suppose those techniques are called T1 up to Tn. Then we have the hashes generated against each technique. So we have H1 up to Hn. Now as the technique used by the spammers are approximately the same, so the hash generated as I discussed in the previous example as well will differ by a small value but it will result in a true uh, it will result in a true function rather than uh, rather than uh, resulting in a false. So now we can categorize the hashes according to a pre predefined threshold. So we we define a threshold that up to this much similarity is adjustable in our system. We call this threshold as J card threshold, which we will explain in the implementation section. Now. Having hashes difference values larger than the given threshold lie in one category and vice versa. This is the whole methodology how this technique is working. The results are better than the previous blacklist technique. It was like 20% better than the, uh, uh, the previous technique that we have applied. Now, when we see the results that whether they are capable in the modern spam filters as well so we realize, we realize that results are still not quite in the same league as modern spam filters 
Now, this is not an issue with the algorithm. When we do an analysis of the data set, the nature of the data that we have is not that repetitive. So if we don't have the repeated set of patterns in the in the training set and in the testing when we are we are trying so we will have more new email messages that does not confirm to the patterns in the training data set that is the reason that why this is not working now just let's take a look at the implementation of this case study <clears throat> 